Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Health and Fasting. In this episode, we're going to be talking about some medical complications and precautions that certain people need to be aware of in the month of fasting. So firstly, we're going to talk about diabetics. Diabetes is a very important disease and is a very common disease in the UK and actually worldwide as well. So just to talk about diabetes in a bit more detail, Diabetes is of two types, what we call type 1 diabetes, which normally affects younger people, so children and young adults, normally less than 40, and type 2 diabetes, which is in older adults. So just to talk about these initially in a bit more detail, type 1 diabetes is also sometimes called insulin-dependent diabetes. So by this we mean that the body is unable to produce insulin. So we talked about the pancreas in a previous episode and this was the organ that produces insulin. In people who are type 1 diabetic, for some reason their body does not produce insulin so their pancreas is not working properly. So as a result of not being able to produce insulin, they cannot metabolise and break down sugar and then this leads to problems with high levels of sugar in the body and can lead to some, some, sometimes very severe and drastic complications. So these patients need to be managed on insulin and they will have insulin which they will inject uh, in, into themselves in normally a couple of times a day. So they'll have what's called long-acting insulin which will normally be given overnight and sometimes in the morning and then they'll have short-acting insulin which will be used normally with meal times. And the short-acting insulin will be varied, the dose of that will be varied depending on what they've eaten during the day. So they will be injecting insulin two to three times during the day to try and manage their problem and deal with the sugar in their body. Type 2 diabetes is more to do with lifestyle and unfortunately obesity. So type 2 diabetics are generally older and they do have insulin but their body for some reason is unable to utilize the insulin or there's what's called insulin resistance. So the effect of the insulin in the body doesn't work as well as it does in people who are not diabetic. So type 2 diabetics are generally older, they tend to be overweight and they tend to have a less healthy lifestyle. So this is the overall difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetics. Type 2 diabetics are often initially managed with what's called lifestyle modification. So they may be advised to lose weight, they may be advised to try and increase their levels of exercise and also address their dietary issues. So cutting out refined sugars, cutting out adding sugar in tea and coffee and eating more complex, what we call complex carbohydrates that are metabolized over a longer period of time. So that's generally how type 2 diabetics are initially managed. If that doesn't work, then they will be put on some form of medication to try and control their blood sugar levels. And then if further on down the line, they're still not managed with medication, they too may also end up being put on insulin as type 1 diabetics are. So why is diabetes a problem and why is it important for us to think about this in terms of fasting? Well, as I've said, diabetes and people who are diabetic have problems metabolizing and breaking down sugar. So when sugar gets high in the blood, this can cause lots of issues with the patient becoming unwell. So they may develop problems with high levels of sugar and this can lead to complications such as nausea, vomiting, feeling very unwell and in severe cases actually suffering what's called a diabetic ketoacidotic event. So what that means is they develop very high levels of sugar and they become very unwell and they can also develop seizures and convulsions and even coma. So this is a problem that needs to be, that people need to be aware of and they need to be able to manage this. So during the month of fasting this becomes more of an issue. Also some diabetics, particularly type 1 diabetics, can suffer what is called a hypoglycemic attack. So this is where the blood sugar becomes very low and this can be a catastrophic event 
and can occur sometimes very suddenly. So when imagine if you're tired and you haven't eaten for a long time, you may feel faint and dizzy and lightheaded. This is because your blood sugar is low. Even if you're not diabetic, you can often suffer with this problem. If you haven't eaten for a long period of time and your energy levels are going down, you feel tired, you may feel faint, you may feel lightheaded, and obviously you need to eat something. In diabetics, this can become a problem acutely, so they can become, particularly type 1 diabetics, very low in their blood sugar, and this can be a medical emergency. So they become low in their blood sugar, they become what's called hypotensive, their blood pressure goes down, they develop nausea, vomiting, sweating, and again, as with high blood sugar, they can go very rapidly into a coma. In fact, in diabetics, it's the low blood sugar that is much more of a problem than can be a life-threatening emergency rather than the high blood sugar. So type 1 diabetics need to be aware of this and they are often advised to carry a sugary snack, a drink such as Lucozade, a high sugar drink, or they've given some uh, sugar medication which they can use when they feel their blood sugar is going low. So diabetics, particularly type 1 diabetics, will be given a blood sugar monitor where they prick their finger a couple of times a day and they measure their blood sugar levels and they are, no, they are told what is a sensible level of sugar that, should, that they should be running at. So for example between a sugar level of 6 to 9 that would be an acceptable level of sugar on the machine that they're given. So they will be able to monitor their blood sugar and they're also advised about the symptoms to be aware of if their sugar is going high or low. So this is something that is very important for diabetics generally, but particularly during the month of fasting. Because as we've said, during such long fasts, you're not eating for such a long period of time, and naturally your sugar level may go down. And as a result of that, you are at risk of these hypoglycemic attacks. So there is something to be aware of there. And sometimes it may be advisable if the diabetic has very bad control or they are at risk of developing very low or very high blood sugars, they may be advised that actually fasting is not for them and they should not fast because it will be adverse to their health and it may have a detrimental effect on their well-being. Now from an Islamic perspective, whilst I'm not a scholar, I, my understanding is that if someone has a chronic health problem, then they are excused from fasting and they are not obliged to carry out this religious duty. So for the viewers who are thinking, should I fast or shouldn't I fast? Is it okay from a religious perspective? Yes, if you have a long-term health problem, particularly if you're diabetic, type one diabetic and have difficulty controlling your sugars, then to my understanding, it is perfectly acceptable that you are excused from the fasts. Now, if there's some other way to compensate for this from uh, doing charity or something, that will be something to ask and discuss with the scholars. But certainly from a health perspective, it is perfectly acceptable for you to be excused from the fasting. So, just to think about how this affects people in terms of fasting, particularly the diabetics, as we've talked about the risks of a very low or very high blood sugar, these are the two extremes that the diabetic patient needs to be aware of and how to recognize this and how to deal with it. So if, say, someone is a diabetic and they are fasting, if they start to feel unwell, then it is advisable that they break their fast immediately and have a, a sugary snack or if they need to, if they feel their blood sugar is high, to administer some insulin, but they should break their fast and if they are feeling very unwell, they should seek medical attention, either going to the emergency department or trying to contact their doctor if they feel significantly unwell. So other things to be aware of are how do, we, how do diabetics time their medication? So it is important to think about what type of medication the, the uh, diabetic is on and when they take it. So as we've discussed, with type 1 diabetics, they'll be injecting themselves between two to three, maybe four times a day. So with regard to this, if you are unsure about whether you are allowed to inject medications, please do refer to a scholar for further information and clarification in terms of the acceptability of using injections during fasting. But as we've said, they may be injecting themselves a couple of times a day 
and if they wish to fast, it will be worthwhile them seeing their GP or talking to their specialist about trying to change their insulin. So this is something to think about before the month of Ramadan starts because they can't just suddenly change their insulin and when the month of fasting starts because it may have effects on their body. So it's worthwhile thinking about this before you start fasting, speaking to your doctor and then trying to change the medication a week or so, a week to two weeks before and seeing how this affects you in terms of your sugar control and managing your diabetes. If you are able to do that and able to keep a steady level of sugar, then it may be possible to alter the uh, length of the insulin and the time it's, in, uh, time it's administered. So as we discussed, there is what's called long-acting and short-acting insulin. And the short-acting insulin is normally given at meal times, and the long-acting given uh, either overnight or first thing in the morning. So it's worthwhile discussing that with your doctor, trying a trial period of changing the insulin and seeing if you can maintain a steady sugar even whilst you've done this. In terms of type 2 diabetics, they will be on medication, oral medication, uh, which is of many different types. So some of the oral medications has a direct effect on the sugar and again can cause problems, as we've said, with terms of low blood sugar or hypoglycemia. So for example, drugs of the sulfonylurea types, diabetics will be aware of these various drugs. These are some of the drugs that can cause low blood sugars. So it's again important to think about the effects of the medication on your body and the effect in particular how this will affect your sugar. So again, you may want to speak to your doctor in terms of trying to alter the medication, the timing of the medication, whether you take it first thing in the morning, last thing at night, and how that may affect your sugar levels and how that may affect your uh, control of your diabetes. So again, it's worthwhile thinking about how your medication affects your diabetes and what it might mean in terms of fasting. It's very advisable not to have what we call too tight a glycemic control. So normally your doctor will say it's good to try and control your sugars within a tight margin so they don't vary too much. But during fasting, as the body's physiological mechanisms and adaptations change, it's not a good idea to try and maintain the sugar within a too tight a margin. So I talked about before maintaining your blood sugar level between the levels of six to nine, which is normally what we'd suggest to our patients. But when you are fasting, I think we would allow a wider range so that we could probably go higher, not too much lower, but maybe down to five. But we would probably allow the patient to go higher so that they're not trying to control their sugar too tightly because as we've said, if they control the sugar too tightly, they may be at risk of developing this low blood sugar and all the problems that are related with that. So it's very worthwhile talking to your doctor, speaking to your specialist. Often you'll have a diabetic nurse who may be able to offer you advice and help. And then these may be things that you can discuss with them. And in the UK, there are lots of charities available. There's Diabetes UK. These are very useful resources and they often have a lot of information for different uh, communities in the UK and they will definitely have information about how fasting affects you and things that you can do to try and, if you wish to carry out your fast, try and continue your fast, but manage your condition, manage your medication in a way that hopefully allows you to continue and carry out your religious obligation. But what I would like to stress is once again, if you do feel unwell, or you feel unable to control your blood sugar adequately. So you are allowed to be excused from your fasts for medical reasons. That's not just for diabetes, that is for any medical problem that you may suffer with. So you can rest assured that from the religious perspective, if you have a long-term chronic medical condition that is adversely affecting your health, then you are allowed to not have to carry out the fasts. But if there's other religious obligations you may need to do to compensate for that, then please do speak to your scholar and ask them for more clarifications. I hope that this episode has been useful for you, for, the, for those of us who are diabetic, in terms of thinking about things that are important to consider during the month of fasting, and we will hopefully be discussing other long-term health conditions in a subsequent program. I hope to see you then again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.